Hello and welcome to Filling the Sink, a podcast from Catalan News. I'm Lorcan Doherty and today we're talking about cycling. One of cycling's grand tours, La Vuelta, kicks off in Barcelona this weekend with the first four stages crisscrossing Catalonia. No better opportunity then to delve into the cycling world in Catalonia. On today's podcast, we visit Girona, which has become a real hotbed for cycling pros, enthusiasts and tourists alike. Joining me today is Killian Shades. Hello, Killian. Lorcan, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Yes, yeah, so we'll be hearing about your visit to Girona very shortly. Uh, but just thought I'd ask, I mean, cycling, I know you're big into sports, football. I know as, you know, you're know you a big football man. What about cycling? Where's that come in? Well, I always liked it as a kid. I always had a bike growing up. I Even now, it's my primary mode of getting around Barcelona. But I, I t- I'd say I've never really gotten into the act of watching it, watching the pros, watching the races. But I do have to say, in researching this this podcast, I have I've gotten a bit of the cycling bug lately. Yeah, yeah I've been following some of the races, the the Tour de France, of course, and uh, yeah, I'm getting a bit more into it. Yeah, the Tour de France is one of those things that I wouldn't go out of my way to watch, but you know, I'd happily you know have it on in the background, and then gradually, as 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 the stage goes on, you kind of become a little bit more. All oh, right, what's going to happen here? You know, but tell uh, you what the phenomenal camera work. Yeah, like to just have it on in the background. You know, maybe if it's coming up to siesta time, (laughs) very nice accompaniment to a nap. I have to say, and then you wake up for the exciting finish. Uh, well, it's the same with La Vuelta a España, which is kicking off in Catalonia. So La Vuelta is, as I said at the start there, that's one of these three grand tours. We've got the Tour de France, mentioned that obviously, and the other one being the Giro d'Italia as well. So first held in 1955, and it's only the second time that the tour is starting in Barcelona. Uh, the last one being back in 1962, over 60 years ago. Uh, so they'll be uh, kicking off, trying to see who's going to get a hold of the red jersey, not the yellow jersey. Uh, and it's going to be a lot of fun, Killian. Oh, it is. It really is. I'm looking forward to it. We've got the first day in the Porto Olympic. That's the, the, the big departure point of a time trial for the first stage, nearly 15 kilometers through the whole streets of the Catalan capital. And then day two is also going to be a lot of fun. That's starting up in Mataró, just in Argentona, just a bit north of Barcelona. And this is a, just a hilly stage, but we're talking over 180 kilometers for the whole day they're going through. Not much for these pros, yeah, but it sounds like a lot. Actually, that one's passing through Molins de Rey, so... Uh, my hometown, so I'll, I'll have to get out and see that. Uh, no excuses, yeah. And it's going to finish up near the Olympic Stadium in Montjuic, so I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna head out there that day for that. Actually, the description of the end sounds amazing because they go up to the castle and then down, and so it's like uh, you've got an uphill and then a really fast downhill, and it's going to be a really dramatic end to that stage two. It's going to be very exciting. Stage yeah. three is a big one. This looks torturous. Absolutely torturous. This is going from Surya in the middle of Catalonia, kind of very central, all the way up to Andorra, Arinzal. A uh, mountainous stage, so this is the day we're expecting to see the first big bit of drama, really. That's where, you know, the strong and the weak are really separated, up in the mountain stages. And then a bit of an easier day, the, the following day, when they, they come from Andorra all the way through Catalonia, back to Tarragona and the coast south of south of Barcelona. I love how we describe a nearly 200 kilometer race as uh, easy. As, yeah. as this is more of a, of a rest. It's one. almost a rest yeah. for these riders, yeah. It's I true, know. though, because, I mean, it is mostly downhill, but I mean... It's like a rest for them is is a bigger day of cycling than I've ever done in my life. And these kind of stages then, that means that all the cyclists are pretty much going to finish at the same time. So that's, I can just imagine now seeing, you know, going through the streets of Tarragona, obviously a really historic old city and just these cyclists bunched together. You know, it's going to be, it's going to be great for you. Yeah, yeah. And after that, of course, the race lasts uh, three weeks. It's going to go down the south of Spain then all the way up to the north before eventually finishing in Madrid on the 17th of September. Yep. Sneaking a little stage in France as well. Well, uh, just over the Pyrenees. Well, the Catalan leg of La Vuelta finishes in Tarragona, and that's actually pretty apt because it's a city with a very long cycling tradition. I was reading the first ever cycling tour race held in Spain was not La Vuelta a España. It was La Volta a Tarragona. First held back in 1908. To give you an idea, La Vuelta started in 1955, so quite a long history. No longer going, sadly. Uh, the last edition was held in 2010, but still going strong is La Volta a Catalunya. Killing. So we've got La Vuelta a España and La Volta a Catalunya. Exactly, yeah, the Catalan version of it. Yeah, it's, it's the biggest race. Obviously, that's all entirely in Catalonia. It's got a long history as well. It started just three years after the Volta Tarragona, so it started in 1911. 
And it's held in March. It's got seven stages, seven days in a row. And the most recent one was won by the Slovenian Primoz Roglic. Yeah, the leader in, in La Volta, or the winner as well, wears this, uh, not a yellow jersey, not a red jersey, but this white jersey with three green stripes. I'm a big fan of it, actually. I was uh, just having a look. I've said the whole aesthetics of cycling, <laughs> I'm very yeah. into as well. Yeah. Like when you see the peloton going past with their different colours and you see like some polka dot jerseys, some teams with different colours as well. Like, And then in front of gorgeous backdrops of it could be snowy mountain tops or, or I mean, lush green fields. Tell you what, the aesthetics are really something else. Very, very beautiful sport. Yeah, maybe there's something about, you know, it is a very male-dominated sport, but all these, like, pinks and polka dots and all this. I wonder if there's a bit of, you know, they can get lo- let loose a bit, express themselves, that maybe, you know, they can't when they're not on their bike, you know. Uh, <laughs> um, could be, yeah, that could be something to it. Looking at the number of cyclists registered in Catalonia, less than one in 10 are women. It's also one of the most popular sports in Catalonia. Catalonia has 708 cycling clubs. Uh, So actually the third most popular sport behind football, as you would expect, and also hunting, which I think debatable whether you would really classify that that as a sport. That's also true, yeah. Just in 2018, they started a women's version of La Volta a Catalonia, which they've called Revolta, which is kind of a play on words words because that means revolt. So there's a bit of, you so know, a revolution in yeah, the cycling world. Exactly. So it's a good um, name. Uh, that takes place in April. It was just a one day event at the minute. The 2023 winner was Claire Steeles. Uh, and we've also got La Vuelta Femenina, which is the Spain wide uh, women's race, which started in 2015. I mean, living here, Killian, I think it's really noticeable how popular cycling is as well, because, well, maybe it's because I live just on the edge of Colcerola, which is, you know, the hills just above Barcelona, and obviously where a lot of cyclists in Barcelona go to kind of get a workout at the weekend or even early morning during the week. But the main road that goes past me, I think there's more cyclists that go past than uh, cars, you know, and they're all in, in the gear and stuff. But probably maybe the capital of cycling when it comes to Catalonia is actually further north in Girona. And you've been finding out a little bit more about that. Absolutely. Yeah, Girona. 100% is, is definitely the biggest gravitational pull in the world of cycling out of all of Catalonia, I can definitely say. Um, yeah, everyone that I've been speaking to up in that area lately has been telling me just the, the non-stop amazing features that it has that just combine to make it just the perfect place to draw such a... A cycling crowd. I mean, what are we talking about? Well, some people that I've uh, spoken to, they estimate that over 100 professionals are living there at the moment. There's numerous professional teams that are also based there. Uh, It's the perfect place, say, if you come from Australia and you need to base yourself in Europe because that's where most of the biggest races are. For most of those people, Girona is going to be the place to go. Uh, It's actually hilarious. Dave Walsh from Pro Cycling Outlet, sort of a a secondhand professional gear shop based up there. I interviewed him. We're going to hear from him shortly. And he gave me a lift back into the city afterwards. And we were just chatting in his car afterwards. And at one point, just barely five minutes into the drive, he said, now, we're already after passing by two professionals on the road here in our (laughs) very short journey. Do you realize that? So they're just uh, they're just out and about. And he's able to pick them out. He, He knows them all. Yeah. He knows so many people up there and yeah, the community just sort of uh, gets to know each other. Okay, well, let's take a listen. You went along to find out what makes Girona so good for cycling. Girona, it, it's the perfect storm. And for many, many years, people have been asking me, why Girona? Why is it so good? And I'm like, well, it's, it's the perfect storm. So it's good roads, good climate, you know, good range of terrains and different places to cycle, which is really good for training. It's very beautiful, so the landscape is very nice. Dave Walsh is a former professional mountain bike racer who has been living in Girona for the past 20 years. He has seen the transformation of the city into a mecca for cycling firsthand, and he now runs Pro Cycling Outlet, a store selling specialised bike gear from professional teams. Christian Meyer, another former pro who has spent years in Girona, explains the benefits from the athlete's point of view. Obviously, there's a big variety of riding. Um, You can ride on flat roads, you can ride to the coast, which is obviously spectacular, the coastal road along the Med. We've got sort of, let's say, medium mountains quite close. You know, obviously, Rocca Corba is quite famous. Um, Mountains that sort of reach about a thousand meters in, in altitude are very close by. And then obviously the Pyrenees are not far away, so you can get into longer climbs there. 
professionals come from all over the world not only to live in Girona, but to undergo training camps in the area too. As Latifa Alassine and Nora Alamiri, two members of the Q80 national team, explain. We are here for uh, summer camp. We usually uh, come here to train for our uh, championships and races. It's a nice weather. Nice atmosphere, all professional cyclists here, uh, amazing routes. The people here are uh, so respectful for the kind. cyclists. Um, so we are planning to go Pyrenees, uh, Andorra, our next uh, destination. <laughs> but it's not just the terrain and landscapes that cyclists come for. One thing that uh, people maybe underestimate is that there's lots and lots of cyclists here because there's lots and lots of cyclists here. Roughly in World Tour, so top level of road cycling, there's you know three or four hundred guys in the world doing it, so it's really small. And maybe there's probably over 100, 150 in Girona, right? Or, or have been in Girona, so uh, it's a lot. Consequentially, you get a lot of staff, so there's a lot of physios and, you know, swannies and three or four teams based here now. So, you know, that perpetuates, right? If you were recently made it pro, there's a lot of other riders here as well. So that's great because you can train together and, and hang out together. And, you know, that, that's, that, that community is super important. The cars, the traffic, once you get out drone, there is very little traffic. And here the cars are very, very respectful of cyclists. So that makes for training, I think for people here riding makes a really big difference because it feels quite safe to ride your bike um, in Girona and Catalonia. And it's not just professionals that come to Girona to cycle. Eat Sleep Cycle is one company providing bike tours of the region, as cyclotourism in Girona has flourished in recent years. Co-founder Lee Comerford tells us what makes Girona so special. Really it's the it's the community and the environment and the, 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 the general atmosphere of Girona that when you arrive as a cyclist, cycling is cool, you just feel like you fit in. I think that's what makes it really special because it's too easy to say the roads are good and the gravel is good and the mountains are good. That is all amazing and the weather's great of course but is that real feeling when you arrive? I've seen people come to our hub with their friends and go look and they've got a bike shop and bike highs over there and there's a cafe here and everyone's sat around uh, in their cycling kit. You know there's other places where you're in your cycling kit and you feel like the odd one out but in Girona you fit right in and I think that really is what makes it so special. So what are some of the best routes to cycle in the Girona area? I like to ride mountain bike as well as road so I like to ride in Las Cavadas, which is the mountain. It's like it's a mountain nature reserve just behind the city, which is where Al's Angels is, very famous uh, climb. My favorite road r- route, I would say, is El Far. Uh, it's an altitude 1100 meters with a, like a little monastery, like perched on the top of a 150 meter cliff. So it's a fantastic view. One of my favorite climbs is Rocca Corba. It's really hard. Uh, you ride from Bagnoles. Uh, it's about a thousand meters uh, in, in height. Uh, so you climb about 800 meters and it's steep. Um, it's a road climb, uh, but it's really hard. But the, the view at the top is absolutely incredible. Probably one of the most beautiful routes is the coastal loop. So it kind of heads from Girona and goes out through some farm roads and then kind of goes towards um, Tosa de Mar, and then from Tosa de Mar you can hit the coast road all the way up to Pajadaro, and then you kind of come back over Laganga, Bisbal, and then back to Girona. It's quite an iconic loop, but it's super beautiful. I mean, the coast is so amazing. Listen to that does make me just want to go and see some of those places on a bike, you know, because I've, I've been I've been to some of those coastal towns, say, on the coast of Brava, you know, taking the car and, you know, done some hiking along there. But when you're driving along those roads, I have thought, God, I'd love a little bit more time to appreciate these views. So, yeah, me going on the bike would definitely give me plenty of time to take it in at the pace I'd be going. <laughs> you tempted? I am indeed. Like, uh, so am I now. When I've been researching this whole topic, I was uh, getting very tempted to rent a bike for a weekend and go around the, the whole area. And so I've been looking into a lot of these routes as well. And there's plenty that I've found that weren't even mentioned there by the people that I spoke with. Like, There's one that looks amazing to do, like all along the banks of the River Ter. And that goes out past a few farmhouses and ultimately loops past a, a brewery oh, called Dos Kiwis. <laughs> and good to, you know, replenish the, the energies there, I'd say, <laughs> halfway through. Um, but then there's other ones that look a bit more intense that, look, I'm sure for, for, for cycling enthusiasts and not beginners like myself... 
they might be a bit more apt for this, but maybe less me. But uh, the San Hilari climb, for example, the uh, Santa Pelaya loop, which is also known as the Hincapi loop that I've, I've seen that mentioned before, named for George Hincapi, one of the biggest uh, former domestiques in the game for none other than Lance Armstrong, for Dom- example. Domestique, which I found out just a few hours ago what, what that meant. You might want to explain it. Sure. It's, it's basically a team member who is not the leader. So in a professional cycling team, they are going to focus their efforts on making things easier for the the team leader to ultimately try and win the the big race. Okay, so that yeah, that was for Lance Armstrong in his case, he who should not be named during a, yeah, a yeah. cycle of podcast these days. He who was also a former resident of Girona. Ah, there yeah, you go. Lance Armstrong and George Hincapie, they both lived in in the northern Catalan city in the early 2000s. So yeah. And with so many nice routes also around Olat and the Garacha volcanic region, Probably no surprise that cycling tourism has really taken off in Girona as well. Big time. It's really taken off massively in the past maybe 10 years or so. So much so that even the Universitat de Girona, the Girona University researchers there published a study only last year called How to Develop a Road Cycling Tourism Destination, Girona as a Case Study. And this really gave us a clear view of, of what the city is, as it has become, like the, the, the significance of cycling there. So it took data from 2018 and that year Girona welcomed over 40,000 cyclists. Uh, the study also pointed out that on average each one of those people spent 10 days in the Girona region and spent around 162 euros per day. All in all, they calculated that the cycling industry could be worth around 89 million euros annually to the Girona region. I mean, we've had debates on the podcast before about tourism, which is it's always a hot topic in Catalonia, but the authorities are always looking for tourists when they do come to spend some time here and if they spend some money, that also helps. So I guess this is a, a, maybe a kind of tourism that they're they're in favour of. You know, as you said, people coming and spending 10 days in the region. It's not, for example, well, we've done other podcasts about the cruise ships, for example, in, mm-hmm. in Barcelona, where people come and spend less than 10 hours. So it's, it's yeah, and they congest the very city centres as well, where they go, where by nature of cycling tourism, you're going to cover many kilometres, dozens of kilometres, maybe even hundreds of kilometres in a day. So... By the nature of it, you're going it's to be spread, spread out, out yeah. and see lots of different places. Yeah. Girona is also home to lots of cycling festivals, races, events. Absolutely, yeah. And this is one of the things that's going to attract so many people there, but also lots of locals will get involved in as well. So we've got a competition in March, the Girona Manter Duathlon, that combines two disciplines, athletics and road cycling. Of course, we've got the Balta every year in March too. We've got the Gran Fondo Girona Cycling Festival, which takes place in June also. Uh, and then we've got this thing called Sea Otter Europe that's in September. And that's an American cycling fair that has chosen Girona as its first location in Europe. And this is a festival that's centered on an exhibition, basically. It's going to attract 400 brands this year, as well as 6,000 cyclists from up to 50 nationalities. So it's a real celebration of the whole sport. And then we, we mentioned earlier that this is a male-dominated sport, but there's one event in October that kind of tries to address this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Gerund. Donna. Uh, that's a popular bike tour for women cyclists new to the sport designed to promote the uptake of the of the whole thing. I think October would be a nice time of the year as well because it's still kind of pleasantly warm but not super hot. No, know? exactly. And, and that's a big thing. The spring and the autumn would be the high seasons mm. really for, for all of cycling tourism in the region. So, of course, with all these events, uh, all these tourists coming, Kilina provides opportunities for businesses to set up in Girona like some of the ones that we uh, heard from earlier. Yeah, precisely. And it's not just these big, massive events that people come for, but th- it's the scenery, it's the the area, the whole region of Girona. Eat, Sleep, Cycle, for example, we heard from Lee Comerford earlier on. Well, he and his partner, Louise Laker, set up this company that was initially started just as a blog, a cycling blog, which then developed into this multifaceted business, which does uh, multi-day tours, not just in the Girona area, but they've even expanded all across Europe, even out to Patagonia and the south of Argentina and even Morocco as well. They They also even have a a shop where they sell bikes. Uh, They repair. They even have a cycling cafe there also in this beautiful little uh, complex just uh, just on the riverside in the city centre of Girona. Lovely. 
and one of the other places you visited up in Girona, the Pro Cycling Outlet, uh, run by Dave Walsh, is another uh, very successful business there as well. Exactly, yeah. Now, this seems like a really niche business, and <laughs> to be honest, my mind's a little bit blown like about how it exists, and even the fact that, of course, it has to exist in Girona. Where else <laughs> could it be in the world? It's kind of a fascinating shop that he does. So, so it's an online business, but Dave Walsh sources clothing and equipment from teams and professional riders and brands. So a lot of the stuff that he has is only available basically in his own shop. It's issued wow. to professional teams and riders. It's not generally commercially available. And because he sources it directly from the teams, he can offer huge deals and unique memorabilia also. So we're talking high quality, lots of technical gear, high performance clothing, jerseys, gilets, uh, and then other pieces of mechanics as well, cleaning, maintenance, bike components. Uh, and of course, actual bikes he does sell as well. This year, he's got some team bikes from Education First. This is one of the biggest teams in the world. These bikes would normally retail at around €12,000, but he's selling them for just under 5000 So, if, Bargain, if, yeah. For the people who are really into it, that is a <laughs> I, bargain in fairness. I'm yeah. sure, I'm sure. Uh, now, not that this means anything to me, but what Dave Walsh explained to me is that these bikes are high mod carbon Jura Ace DI2 electronic shifting power meters. Top <laughs> of the top. Well, I, I understood some of those words. No idea what it means, but, but maybe hopefully some of our listeners, you know, that means something to them. Exactly. It's, that's for you guys, the, the bike nerds out there. Well, as well as ridiculously niche bikes, in Girona, you can also get your hands on a nice cup of coffee, but that comes with a, a cycling twist. There's a bit, <laughs> that's there's a exactly bit, it. There's yeah. a bit cafe culture around cycling as well. Precisely, yeah. This is one of the things that really intrigued me when I when I started looking up, like cycling in Girona. Some of the top results that kept coming up were, were all cafes. And it didn't take me too long to piece together that there happens to be in Girona a number of cafes which are actually ran by former professionals. And the more that I kind of scratched beneath the surface, I found that Coffee and cafes are huge in the cycling community for a number of different reasons. So first of all, cyclists, they love a coffee. It gives you energy before you go out. And then after the ride, you'll come back and you need a bit of cake to kind of replenish that energy <laughs> as well. A bit of a sugar boost, yeah. Exactly, exactly. And then on top of that, you might be meeting up with a, a large group of people, which possibly in some cafes, uh, maybe more traditional places that aren't so accommodating for cyclists, they might be a little bit put off by having dozens of people with large <laughs> clunky gear and All the noisy bikes, shoes. Turn a few heads when they come in. Exactly. That's it. That's it. So the result of this is uh, this popping up, this sprawling cafe culture. So we've got uh, Espresso Mafia and La Fabrica, and that's run by Christian Amber Meyer, who we heard from earlier on. We've also got Rory Sutherland, um, Australian former pro. Uh, he operates uh, Federal. We've got Robert Gesink, huge name in the, the world of cycling. He's got Horse Category. And we've also got La Comuna, which is run by Jan Frodeno, a former professional triathlete who... Uh, Long-time readers of Catalan News might recall I interviewed Jan Frodeno in the early stages of the pandemic because he completed a triathlon from his own home. That's right, I remember that. Uh, but that's incredible, all these former pros, if kind of, once they hang up the bike or the cycling shoes or whatever they do when they, when they retire, uh, they decide to get really into making coffee. They pick up the roasters. And yeah. nice coffee too. Yeah. No, that's also a very important thing as well. This isn't just standard run-of-the-mill coffee. We're talking speciality coffee here. So Christian Meyer and Jan Fodeno, they themselves have now turned into roasters. They actually roast the coffee themselves. Um, so yeah, they take it very, very seriously. There you go. Time now for our Catalan phrase. What's it this week, Killian? This week we've got anar a piñón fix. Uh, to go... I don't know, you're going to have to help me with that one. Uh, so it means sort of to go on a fixed gear bicycle, essentially. Right, okay, so fixed gear bike, so yeah, a bike without gears or whatever. But, um, a bike without gears, exactly, but the idea of it is in order to make the bike go, you have to always be working, you have to always be pushing, pedaling, right, right, cycling. Okay. And you would use this to sort of describe a person who's non-stop, they're always in a rush, and maybe even they're a little bit headstrong about it, a bit stubborn about it too. Right, okay. Anar a piñón fix. Anar a piñón fix. 
Well, that's all we've got time for today. Thank you very much to the cycling community in Girona for sharing all their experiences with us. Thanks to you, Kelly, for sharing all your experience with us. Thanks for having me and giving me this great opportunity to talk about cycling for a while. I think we're going to get into it after this, you know. I already am. Thanks to all of our listeners as well. Uh, I hope you enjoy La Vuelta if you're watching it, either in person or on the TV. We're back again next weekend with another episode of Filling the Sink. Until then, for me, Lorcan Doherty, and all of us here at Catalan News, bye for now. Adieu.